let's get straight to the point. I was looking for a photo-centric camera because I already have my main video cameras, which is the Blackmagic 4K and the GH5. I just want a camera that takes better photos and it is easy to use. I got my eyes on the Fujifilm cameras and I narrowed down my choices to the XS10 and the X-T4. The first reason why I picked the XS10 is because of the same image quality. It has the same sensor and processor as the X-T4, so if it is just for normal photos of let's say a product, a person, or a scene, they will produce the same image, and the XS10 is a lot cheaper. You also get the exact same famous Fujifilm simulations on the XS10 and the X-T4. That is why I like Fujifilm because they don't really keep certain features only on their flagship cameras, unlike other brands. Same sensor, same processor, you get almost the same software and features. The Fujifilm simulation is the main reason why I got the Fujifilm camera. I'm not a professional photographer, and I don't have a professional software to edit raw photos. So having good straight out of camera JPEG is awesome for my purposes. Even for some paid jobs, I don't think people will hate Fuji's colors and JPEG. Having the ability to quickly get good looking photos makes it such a joy to take photos casually. And both the XS10 and X-T4 can definitely deliver that. The ability to edit raw photos in camera with almost all the adjustment options is another very mind-blowing feature on Fujifilm cameras. Don't get me wrong, I really admire photographers who take their time to edit raw images to make them into masterpieces. But I do enjoy being able to quickly capture good enough images and share them with my friends and family without asking them to wait till I finish editing the photos. Between the XS10 and X-T4, of course, if you need the weather sealing on the X-T4, you won't be looking at the XS10. But I don't take my cameras out in the rain or anywhere too extreme that I need the weather sealing. I just generally don't like taking photos or videos outdoor when it is raining. Plus, my other cameras are all not weather sealed, so I'm pretty used to not having that. Also, even when the X-T4 is weather sealed, not all the lenses are. So you will still have the risk of damaging your setup if the lens is not weather sealed. And if you happen to have to keep the doors or the flaps open to access the micro HDMI, USB-C, mic jack, the camera is basically not weather sealed anymore. So XS10 because I don't need the weather sealing. But if you need it, XT4 is a must. Yes, you only get up to 4K 30 frames per second, 8-bit 420 video internally on the XS10 compared to the 10-bit 60 frames per second on the X-T4. But that's good enough if I just need to occasionally take videos on this camera. 10-bit is mainly for situations where you want to color grade the footage. Again, I want this to be my photo camera, so I choose the XS10. Just a quick tip, try not to color grade too much on any 8-bit footage. It will fall apart very quickly. If you want to color grade, I would suggest minimum 10-bit. Another reason why I got the XS10 with only 8-bit internally is because of the ability to record 10-bit 422 video externally using an external recorder, like the Atomos Ninja 5. Yes, it will cost you more to get the Ninja 5 plus the XS10, but the recorder will be usable for other cameras or your cameras in the future. You can take the internal 10-bit on the X-T4 and attach it to another camera, so because of that, I still pick the XS10. Also, getting an external recorder will be great if I want to record everything on the camera screen, including settings, when I'm trying to do a tutorial video here on the channel. Yes, the battery on the XS10 is physically smaller than the one on the X-T4, almost half the size, and you cannot get a battery grip for the XS10. But I'm just looking for a camera for casual photo taking and sometimes some portrait photography, so battery life is good enough for my purposes. Also, I don't think getting a second battery and taking the time to change a battery is that big of a deal. It almost sounds like a first row problem to me. But if you really, really need a lot of battery life and you will for sure don't have the time to change a battery, get the X-T4. Most likely, you are going to use the X-T4 for a professional paid job like weddings and events. 
But keep in mind, there is the same 30 minutes video recording limit on both the XS10 and the X-T4. So even if you have more battery life, you will still have to press the record button again every 30 minutes. But you should be able to bypass the time limit by using an external recorder. So another reason to save the money for the recorder if you want to record longer footage. The single SD card slot on the XS10 does not really bother me as well because again, I didn't get this camera for professional jobs where I absolutely need to have a backup of my photos and videos in camera. If you need that feature, XT4. The only thing that actually bothers me is the SD card slot location. It is so hard to get the SD card out when it is sitting so deep besides the battery. It will be much easier if the SD card slot is in the grip. It doesn't have to be dual slot just to have it in the grip. My Canon EOS R used to have a single card slot in the grip too. The dials. Yes, the X-T4 looks very, very cool with all the retro shutter speed and ISO dials at the top, but I honestly prefer the dials on the XS10 not because I don't want to learn photography, but it is because of the ease of use and the ability to quickly change modes. Especially if I'm doing street photography, I would rather be able to change the mode quickly instead of missing the photo opportunity. Also, not having the shutter speed and ISO dials doesn't mean you don't know photography. It is just like driving a car with automatic transmission, but you still know how to drive a manual car too. I just choose to drive auto because of reasons like conveniences, but I still enjoy driving manual occasionally. The higher burst rate on the X-T4 is also something I don't think I need to have for this camera. I rarely take photos of high-speed actions and I think 20 frames per second with electronic shutter is good enough for me on the X-S10. The only thing is the slower UHS-1 card on the X-S10 that will significantly decrease the amount of pictures being taken during the burst. So for high-speed actions and sports type of photography, get the X-T4 with the burst rate of 15 frames per second with mechanical shutter. The EVF and display on the X-T4 is better than the X-S10, but it doesn't mean they are not good on the X-S10. To me, they are good enough. The display is nice and clear, even better than my Sony A7III's display. The EVF on the X-S10 is really small though, so if you need a bigger EVF magnification, get the X-T4. It'll be nicer to use. When it comes to the in-body image stabilization, the X-S10 is only half a stop less stabilized compared to the X-T4. I didn't compare them side by side, but the stabilization on the X-S10 is very good for photos, maybe not videos. Trust me, it is not good if you're moving a camera. The stabilization will try to fight the movements and start jumping, especially on longer focal length. Wide angle and slow movements is not too bad. Another quick tip, if you are going to have a lot of camera movements when you are recording videos, turn off the IBIS. Try to get a gimbal. It will be much better. I'm not going to compare the buttons and customizations on the X-S10 and the X-T4 because you will eventually get used to the button layout after using the camera for a while. But I do really like the four custom modes on the X-S10 that allow me to quickly switch between profiles. Let's say I have C1 set to street photography, C2 set to portraits, C3 set to night photography, and C4 set to action photography. It is very convenient. Finally, the price difference. I saved about $800 by getting the XS10, but not the X-T4. That's good enough for me to get a lot of accessories, including a full camera cage, an extended EVF eye cup, and the most important thing, a very, very amazing secondhand portrait lens, the Fujifilm 56mm f1.2. That costs me the same as the price as the X-T4, just the body. With the same cost, I can now start taking photos with the X-S10 combo. That's very important because not everyone has the budget to buy a whole bunch of lenses and accessories to start. Having the ability to start taking good photos, maybe not me, but a lot of people who just started getting into photography at a lower cost is pretty amazing. That's it. Those are the reasons why I got a Fujifilm camera and why I picked the X-S10 over the X-T4. 
Remember, they're both very amazing cameras and the XS10 is just more suitable for me. Maybe the X-T4 is better for you. At the end of the day, pick the camera that you will enjoy using and start taking more photos. I need to remember that too. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.